Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, we talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Reacher Season 1, Episode 7. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This was the episode of Answers, where everything kindly finally gets resolved. But before we kind of get into that, we'll kind of break it down as we're breaking down the rest of the episode. But first and foremost, the Stevenson, Stevenson stuff is so tragic. What kind of solidifies it even more is at the beginning when he's talking to his wife. He's not even around anyone else. He's being like, yeah, I don't think things are being run the right way. I was like, Stevenson, you're actually a good guy. And then we see the van pull up. I was like, oh, no. I was like, that sucks. I, I love that one-two punch of the realization of, yes, he's a good guy. And then we have the situation of, Nope, they're about him and his wife is going to die. We know it's going to be both of them. There's no way they're just going to let one of them live. I was almost hoping maybe he could, but I'm like, no, he's dead. It sucks too, because I talked to, because I, I, I'm not going to like uh, be revisionist about history. I doubled down on being like, I think Stevenson's one of the people that killed Joe, like the person who put the cardboard over and kind of feeling a little remorseful. I thought that was him. Well, the fact of the matter is. There was a conversation him and Roscoe had in a police station where he was like, you think, or, I don't know, does it seem like we're handling this thing the right way? And that made me go like, maybe he's not behind this, but afterwards I still doubled down on it. But that episode in particular, that conversation in particular gave me pause to be like, maybe Stevenson's not part of this. And sadly he wasn't. And even later on, Finley's like, man, if we had told him the truth, maybe we brought him into the fold, maybe we could have protected him. Not only him, his wife, who was pregnant. And you're just like, Jesus, the gut punch. The guilt that both Reacher and the guilt and anger that both Reacher and Finley feel over that. Because it's like, right, uh, he wasn't like torture he wasn't this wasn't done to him because finley thought like all right because what was done to him this is their way of sending a message to someone who failed a job but richard's like no if you look at it the mirror set up it's like they wanted to make sure he saw his wife getting tortured they never cut off his balls which has been their signature move when dealing with someone that failed them but as i know they were just trying to get information because stevenson was seen talking to roscoe to um to Reacher and Finley. The bad guys assumed they were working, he was working with Reacher and them, and Reacher and them assumed he was working with the bad guys. Poor guy, you know? As I, Finley's like, if we had told him information, we could have protected him. It's like, I guess by not telling him anything, you were okay. Granted, they still have their other sources, which we'll talk about it later on in the episode. So it is kind of sad. It was all for nothing because Stevenson actually knew nothing, and him and his wife died for nothing. And it's like, at the very least, they would have been more on the loop. They would have been more protected, been on, had their head more on a swivel because he would have been prepared, being like, okay, they might try to come after us just like they came after everyone else involved in this. So. Ultimately, uh, Finley ends up getting kicked off not only the case, but the entire investigation because Till's like, yeah, 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 you, you did another person's in the ground, which is like, it's such horse shit because you're, you're neck deep in all of this and for you to chastise Finley about like oh another person you've lost it's like shut the fuck up you piece of shit because you're the, you're just as culpable for all these deaths and you have the audacity to pretend like every, nothing's a problem and that's why I love what Reacher does when he kind of not even reverse psychology but he he uh, turns things around on Baker being like yo like you're the only person I can trust like Finley it's got to be him and I was like okay I love what you're doing here letting him think like oh you, he's got you for he's taking you for an idiot it's like Baker we've known from the beginning not to trust your ass and now that Stevenson's dead we can double down on being like we already knew not to trust we decided not to trust Baker and Stevenson we should have trusted Stevenson but it's like that leaves you not to be trusted because we know we can so I mean, to be fair, Stevenson was the only one that wasn't fully, fully sure about, even Reacher at the beginning, like around Morrison's death, he's the one that threw Baker on a bus being like, yeah, Baker like left me in a, uh, go into a bathroom with a window with no supervision because it's like, oh, because he already knew I wasn't a murderer, so he wasn't worried about me getting away or anything. So it's like, they had already set up their mind a long time ago about Baker, but yeah, he's so stupid. He's thinking like, oh, I've got this guy full. He's like, yeah, I'm going to head over to... Um, the Huddle's house, and I'm going to look for some information to prove, like, Finley's behind us and stuff like that. And Baker's like, yeah, if you find something, let me know. And he's like, yeah, I will. Just, you'll know exactly where I am. And it's like, yo, 
boy was locked and loaded and ready. And I love that who shows up, Dawson. Dawson's also part of that group. So he's part of the four that goes in. There's five of them in total. One of them's the guy, his name's Emmett. He's the dude that was sitting with Dawson and KJ at that restaurant a couple episodes back. So you're kind of like, yeah, I'm, you're kind of happy. I'm like, oh, I'm glad Dawson's there. I was almost hoping that KJ would be the driver, but he's not. But it's like, you're like, oh, Dawson's fucked. Oh, he's about to get it. And you're just like, he deserves it because he's such a prick. Especially the way he steps to Finley. Like, oh, like, oh, you're the one who killed him and stuff like that. It's like, shut up. I It just makes you sick when you're like, all these people who are directly or not even, they don't even have to be directly, directly, but they're in the mix of all of this. So all these deaths are also, they got blood on their hands. So it just gets you extra pissed for them to like confront our heroes being like, oh, you probably did it. It's like, shut up. You're neck deep in this. You're part of the crew that cut off Morrison's balls and fed him to him after you crucified him and killed his wife so it's like shut up because they're also the same ones who who not only uh tortured and killed stevenson's wife and then him but also their unborn child so you're just like jesus at the same time because finley's going to mississippi because he wants to tell stevenson's family his parents to his fate to their face about what happened which is such a shame but I love that our boy Reacher got the camo on. He came locked and loaded and ended up systematically taking everyone down. I love that the first guy he took down literally knocked him to the ground and stepped on his neck. I was curb stomped his neck. I was like, Jesus. Second guy slit his throat. Third guy shivved him up. Fourth guy also shivved him up. Then it went to a little bit of a lengthy exchange with Dawson. I thought he was going to keep Dawson alive so that he could like pump him for information. Might have been possible if, you know, it's like, oh, well, it's a life or death situation. I mean, Richard was going to kill him regardless, but I thought he was going to pump him for information versus like, nope, uh, popped him full of lead. And I was, but I was just kind of like, ooh, ooh. I was like, mm. like I said, I was kind of hoping you get some information out of him. You might let him, but I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm kind of fine with you popping a cap in his ass because he's, he sucks. So you're just like, ah, uh, just mm, beautiful, sweet, sweet, beautiful revenge. I'm not even going to call it justice. I'm just call it what it is. I like, pure unadulterated revenge. And it's just like, oh, it feels so, it, mm, that payback, let's call it payback. Let's not even use the term revenge, even though it's like, you know, they're, uh, very, not very, they are synonyms, synonyms of each other, but still it's just kind of like, oh, it feels so good. So, yeah, I love Reacher just put, I think he put all the dead bodies in the back of the, the trunk, in the, the truck bed of their vehicle. Took all their weapons, too, because it's like, well, I could always use an arsenal, so. Cleaned up in the huddle, Hubble house, too. It's like, that's kind of, it's like, ah, I can't just kill, got to take a quick refreshing shower after uh, committing five murders. But the whole situation led to him figuring things out because he notices the note in his his uh, pocket, the one like that was uh, that Joe had hidden, and that had all that, that those numbers and addresses on it and stuff, and it was washed the way the ink was. And this is where he figures it all out. I kept thinking the animal feed had something to do. Well, it does, but it didn't play the role I thought it did. And then when he explains it, you're like, oh, that makes a lot more sense to what I was thinking. I was like, oh, you're making the paper from the animal feed. It's like, no, they're using the animal feed as a absorb absorbent for the chemical waste because they are using a special chemical concoction to uh, basically wash away all the ink leaving behind just a blank paper of a bill. You clean it, you dry it, and then you print the front and back. Then you crumple it up a little bit, making it seem to use and not like crisp. So it's like, damn, that's what this all has been about. And because they were taking $1 bills and then reprinting them as $100 bills. And that's how this whole operation was running. And the animal feed, like I say, we acted as a detergent because... The big, the piece I could never figure out before. I'm like, well, what's this about Kleiner? They were like causing some environmental damage in Mississippi. But I'm like, what does that have to do with this? Because the money 
uh, the process they were doing was dumping all that chemical waste in the water and they were kind of getting in trouble. So they found a new way of dealing with it. That's what all this animal feed was. They're looking for this particular ingredient that's in animal feed. If they bought a whole bunch of it by itself, it would have looked suspicious. But because they have cows, all you have to do is let the uh, waste kind of flow underneath the ground where you're farming stuff and then just use the uh, abs uh, animal feed as an ab absorption for it's like so this is where all the pieces kind of finally lock into place is reacher explaining all this to to um roscoe i thought it was interesting because they were at that time they hadn't heard from roscoe yet so i was like oh so you still don't even know well, i mean because roscoe's not in the know about everything that's going down yet then she doesn't know about kleiner being dead because it happened after she left um there was some other stuff. Oh, she also didn't know about Stevenson because they didn't talk about that. Because Finley was like, oh, yeah, Picard's going to call her, like, tomorrow or something. So I was like, I don't know if they talked at all. Maybe maybe they filled her in on some of that stuff. But I had no... Because if they had talked to her, like... Well, if he... They had talked to Picard, but not maybe Roscoe. But I'm like, you, you would talk to both of them because she'd want to know updates about it. So Reacher ended up calling her, which she's like, whoa, you called me before you called Finley? He was like, yeah, I just... She's like... I miss talking to you too, which was really sweet. But then the moment it's like Picard's like, "Oh yeah, what's up?" and she's like, "Oh yeah, we're about to bust this case wide open." I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "Don't trust that guy." And it cut away. I'm like, "Okay, where's this gonna go?" And then later on, when Joblin's house burnt down, I was like, "It's Picard," because Roscoe just told him everything that she learned from Rachel. Like I said, I was super suspicious of the guy. I was like, "Maybe this episode they're gonna make me feel like an idiot for doubting." It's like, nope. I was right to doubt him. Because now the question then becomes like, I I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but Neely ends up finding out the cop that was looking into the, the FBI agent that was looking into the EPA agent's death. He died three years ago from uh, cancer, but his partner uh, ends up being Picard. So I think Picard's the one that shut down the investigation like after his partner died and maybe he was just, he filed everything underneath his partner to kind of make it disappear, but he was the one kind of handling the investigation maybe. Or maybe his partner was the one that died of cancer. But that, but the, my whole point for bringing that up makes it seem like, okay, because my biggest question in the last episode is like, when did they get to Picard? I'm like, why had Picard really made any moves up until now? I was like, maybe it's like, right, they only got to him recently. Maybe that's the case, but... For him to be involved in this to that extent, that going back to an EPA agent, I mean, like, he's been in this mix for a while. So I'm like, why wait till now? Maybe he felt like it would be easier now that uh, Roscoe was there. He couldn't do anything with Charlie and them because if he did, it would fall on him. But if he could make it seem like, oh, Roscoe took over looking after him. Oh, unfortunately, Roscoe, Charlie, and her entire, uh, both of her children ended up dying. Oh, that's because Roscoe wasn't like, he could put the blame on like, oh, Roscoe didn't handle herself properly. Like I, everything was fine when I was there, but it's only when Roscoe took over, things fell apart. So maybe that was going to be the spin. Because I just couldn't understand, like, if it was before now, why, if he was working with this whole operation before now, why didn't he do anything? Why did he only wait till Roscoe shows up? So it was, I guess, just, just to throw suspicion off himself with the whole process. But either way, I mean, it wasn't just Reacher uh, dropping bodies. Finley, well, he didn't drop any bodies, but he had to deal with his own situation because... Till sent people to take care of him because it's like, yeah, Till knows you, who you are as a person. He knew you'd go to Mississippi and talk to Stevenson's family firsthand. So they end up, well, he ends up having to get away from these guys. He doesn't kill them. Uh, Finley wouldn't have been too copacetic with that. To be fair, these people are trying to kill you, but the last thing you need is dropping bodies, drawing more attention to yourself. So... I love how Reacher later on was like, yeah, you know, you know, the Kool-Aid man. He's like, you're serious? Because he was breaking down the wall, but, you know, because it's very thin. And it's like, okay, uh, Kool-Aid man, this shit. And he full steams ahead. There's a couple having sex. It's like, I'm a cop. Call 911. Gets out the window. Gets in his car. Drives by their car. Shoots their tires out. And they have to run because the sirens are coming. So that worked out beautifully. Come back to... Uh, Georgia, you know, Margrave to go to uh, Joblin's place, but the place was on fire. So you're like, oh, they would got to it. Any evidence that might have been there. Once again, that made at that time, your time, you're like, it's definitely Picard because Roscoe just told, had to just tell him everything that Re Reacher just told her. So 
But I once again, going back to that line that Reacher kept bringing up repeatedly, it's all in the details. And once again, it's those small details that you never think about. And it's like, right, Miss Joplin isn't Joplin. She never took her husband's last name. So with the apostrophe S, meaning like, okay, the garage belongs to the Joplings. So meaning that, um, or was it, was it, no, it must have been like, Either it was a S apostrophe or apostrophe S, but meaning like, either way, the whole point was to represent it's by the Joplings, meaning there's two in the house and meant his parents' house. So, and even his mom, uh, Joplings' mom was like, did you know that my son was dead in the moment you came here last time? And he was like, yes. She's like, why didn't you say anything? He's like, because I just didn't have the heart to. Because even Roscoe at the time was like, yeah, after your uh, brother's death and also having to tell... Uh, Charlie about Paul you probably just had enough of being the one responsible for delivering bad news and he was like yeah I just it would have gotten emotional I don't want it's like no he just it, it was just too much at that time and he just didn't want to say anything it's like you guys seem like nice people and I just didn't want to break your hearts at that time so the truth eventually came out anyway but they end up finding money stashed at his parents place and end up having all the evidence they need. And once again, they want to fold Picard. And I was like, that's that's a problem. That's an issue. And just as Neely's dropping this information on Reacher, he shows up in the room and he's like, uh, it's his partner, Picard. And Neely's like, how'd you know? He's like, yeah, lucky guess. And in the room is KJ, Picard, and Teal. So they probably got Charlie Roscoe and her uh, Charlie's children stashed away somewhere. Once again... I'm curious to find out if we find out that Neely, uh, that uh, Paul is still alive. Maybe he still has some role in all of this. Oh, I can't wait for KJ to get his. I don't know if he's going to die at the end of this or whether he's just going to get arrested. We'll have to wait and see. But oh god, I'm so curious to see how this plays out. Having not seen anything from season two, obviously because I haven't finished the season, so I haven't watched the trailer or anything, but. I was under the assumption like maybe season two is going to be its own like oh he goes to a, Reacher moves to a new place shit goes down and he gets involved in it but like there's so much to this like are we going to get introduced to like the main boss of Venezuela because we're mainly handling things from obviously the state side and obviously the Venezuelan side of things is bleeding over because like hitmen are here from there but we're mainly dealing with the people on the the U S side of things like obviously the only last people left standing now is Till. Uh, Mon Baker and KJ and Picard. But what about the Venezuelan boss? Like, we haven't met him. So, is that going to be a season two storyline or will that end up getting wrapped up in the season finale as well? We'll ultimately have to wait and see. I'm very, very excited to ultimately see where this season ends up taking us with the season finale, how this all plays out, what gets wrapped up, what doesn't, how these storylines come to a close potentially we'll ultimately have to wait to see but really that's all i wanted to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye